Greg, <laughs> Greg Gunyan, right? Why wouldn't anyone? Why wouldn't anyone give her creative control to a malcontent who literally walked out of her job on national TV, the company that made her relevant? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, there's a, but I would, to be fair, you know, I. I well, first of all, I wouldn't have given her creative. I wouldn't give creative control to anybody who hasn't established that they know what to do with it, who have a track record of booking their own stuff. That was an insane move. That was a desperate, oh, I got to have her. I got to add one to my collection. She's going to be like the best toy I was able to buy, add to my collection of real life wrestling talent. Um, I wouldn't have given her creative control, but the fact that she walked out of WWE, look, that happens, man. Steve, so-called Steve Austin walked out. He and Vince McMahon <clears throat> couldn't come to a resolution of their conflict. Steve said, screw it. I'm going back to Texas. See you. So I, I don't know that I would have held that against her, but I certainly would have held the fact that she's never demonstrated any ability whatsoever to do anything positive creatively. She had a, she had demonstrated the ability to be a great performer when she was produced and directed, but to give her the keys to the car when she's never demonstrated she knew how to drive. Yeah, that's stupid. Just saying. Eric, our partner in crime, Ann Evans, um, put up a poll and the result came out that 40% of fans think that Monet is an all is on the all time fail list. It's hard to. I, I'm shocked that forty. It's only forty percent. I, I just can't. I. I <clears throat> and again, it's not personal because I don't know her. I have, you know, I have nothing against her. I would love to see her be successful. But I, I, I'm surprised. Sixty percent of the people don't agree with the forty percent. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. She is absolutely. Did you see the reaction she got last night? Yeah, it was, it was horrible. And by the way, Orange Cassidy, you suck. I, you have potential. I thought you were going to be kind of a cool, interesting character because you were so different. But I watched that promo last night. What a waste of fucking time. What was that? I have never seen anybody walk out of national television with less anything I, I it i i it was it was one of the most horrible backstage promos i think i've ever seen not because anybody made a mistake there was just nothing there there was no emotion it, it didn't advance anything it didn't improve anybody's character it didn't create anticipation it didn't be i mean the only question i asked myself was why the fuck would you do that fucking horrible Pull your head out of your ass, Orange Cassidy. This is the only opportunity you're ever going to get. Make the most of it. Put some time and effort into it. Put some thought into it. I dare you. I was excited about your character. Different as it was, but that was the reason I was, because he's very, Orange Cassidy is a very potentially relatable character. Therefore, the grace of God go I. It's, he's one of those types of characters. The average person can look at Orange Cassidy and to see him on national television performing and doing all that great stuff and go, you know what? He's not six foot six and 275 pounds shredded. He does, you know, he's not Eddie Guerrero. He's not Rey Mysterio. He doesn't have that ability, but there's still something really cool about him. That's what I mean about, you know, he, he, he's an aspirational, inspirational character in that regard. But you got to put some effort into it. Darby Allen, don't get me started. You, you, your shit's so old. It's just not over. You got to clean it up. Be a pro. You're coming off like a garbage indie wrestler. You're not coming off as a star. I dare you. Put in some effort. Put in some time. Do your part to get the audience of that show above 622,000 viewers in prime time. And don't give me your bullshit, Dave Meltzer. It's the Olympics excuse because it's not affecting WWE. Not to any degree. Clean up your shit. That show was so bad last night. It really, really was bad. I missed the first 15 minutes of it. Maybe that 15 minutes was awesome. 
But from the time my DVR picked it up to the time it went off the air, it was just ugh. the best part of it was Swerve Strickland and Jr. I think Swerve did a really good job in that promo, and Jr. makes it easy. That's what makes Jr. Jr. Right? He sets you up, but you have to know what to do with that setup. You have to know how to present your character. You have to know how to make that promo feel legit. And Swerve knocked it out of the park. He did a great job. That was the highlight of that show for me last night. It was one of the best interviews I've seen. There may have been other ones because I don't watch AEW every week. But I thought Swerve did a really, really good job, by the way. It was the only thing that made me go, hmm, that was really good. Everything else is like, oh, why am I watching this? Ugh. All right. What do we got? Gold standard. Poor MJF stuck in India oblivion in AEW, even though he's making money, he is stuck in a creative oblivion. Yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, I, I really like the MJF character. I, I get the feeling he's kind of getting back to what worked for him in the very beginning. It seemed like when he came back from the injury that he was almost pushing too hard, trying too hard, maybe evolving his character a little too much so that when he did come back, he didn't come back as the character that everybody loved and admit, loved to hate, but loved and missed. He came back as almost a different character. And I think from what I've seen, and I've watched, I've watched quite a bit of MJF since his return. It wasn't connecting the same way as he did when he left, when he was injured. And now I'm getting the sense that we're kind of getting back to the original MJF character. Perhaps it's just me. And he'll be able to pick us pick up some steam again, but MGF's issues have really very little to do with MJF. It has everything to do with Tony Khan and the ridiculous lack of creative, lack of understanding of producing television, lack of vision, lack of direction. That's what's hurting not only MJF but everybody else. Yep, Alex Hall, GB. Love from England, EB. Thank you, sir. I went to Wembley for All In last year. Had a great time with a non-wrestling fan. She tried to get into the product after the show, but ended up being a WWE fan instead. Well, hey, at least she's into wrestling. Could have been worse, bro. She could have looked at you and went, the fuck am I doing with you? Be gone with you. But that didn't happen. She did turn into a WWE fan, so be grateful. Thank you, Lucky Stars can only get better from here.